Hello, this is Mark at Mark's Upholstery. I've got an interesting little project that I'm gonna do that I have never done before. This right here is a little set T. The client wants a slip cover. I have never done a slip cover before, but I'm sure I'm gonna be able to handle this. Uh, she even wants it to be a little sloppy on there. She doesn't want it trim and proper, so that'll make it a lot easier on me. The way I'm going to start this is I'm going to block out a top. Now I've measured, you know, going inside here some and then coming out. Now this has kind of a, you know, sunk area. So I have to make sure I come out, you know, to here for my blocking. And then I've got a number that I'm going to do to block this back. And then there'll be a certain number for uh, this hanging part because there's gonna be a seam here just like there is now that'll be top stitched and just hang down. But I think one thing I'm gonna do, uh, this has a seam, you know, where everything meets here. And I think this was all just socked down on and everything. But I think I'm gonna take, when I do my joints here, I'm, I will do them here, but I think I'm gonna, you know, let them bellow out a little bit on each side, you know, to kind of let it, uh, you know, expand a little bit out on the bottom so that it doesn't, you know, just look like it went straight down and, and all that, make it look a little more, you know, feathered out, so to speak. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this blocked, get that blocked. Uh, eventually I'll block out this here and then this back. I'll have a big blocked out area and I'll put everything together, uh, mark it out, you know, put some little notches or areas where they meet together and and uh, eventually we'll sew that all together and see how it works. Because this fabric is so white, uh, it's going to be difficult to, say, mark it with white chalk and, you know, be able to see the lines very well. So a trick I usually do when I want to do, um, make it where it's easier to mark and less problematic for marking the top uh, is just flip the fabric over and, and then you can mark on it and then it'll just be a reverse of what you were doing.
just so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Uh, now I've laid out my back blocked piece and just like I did with the seed, I'm gonna kind of push this in a little bit down in here and then I'm gonna draw my line and follow it coming across to here. Um, and I'll do that on both sides. Now, additionally, I'm gonna come across this corner part here on the top and mark all the way around down through here and the same thing. And when I get my line here, um, you know, and then do the same over here, uh, what I have is a width. And so what I'll do, like I did on the seat over there, at, on this part, is I'll start cutting what I, you know, what I approximately think is half of it, which will be, you know, coming up and making my cut to about halfway. And then what I'll do is I'll fold it over and if there's one thing I know I need to do is go to the length that whatever I'm allowing on the other side, which has been about three quarters of an inch, uh, I'll allow that three quarters of an inch over here to fold over to, and then that'll give me the where I can cut the rest of it off of the, the side I just cut, so it'll be an even match with each side. The designer doesn't want this to be a full-fledged slip cover. We're not gonna be lining this. Uh, I will be top stitching the seams, but she wants it to just be a drape on, kind of a sloppy drape on uh, slip cover that's skirted. And then she's gonna, we're gonna put pillows on top of that. You'll notice the lines that I drew on the, when I was fitting it, you know, it was right on this top corner and then down at the bottom area where the seam had run uh, to the bottom of the set T. So I've drawn that line, but because I want this to flare a little bit, you know, have a little, be a little bigger than, uh, instead of just a tight fit all the way around, uh, I've added outside of that a little bit here. And then I'll allow for my seam outside of that when I start cutting. The measurement to the seam was 19 inches. I cut my part 19 and a half so that my skirt will hang a half inch off the ground. Same goes for the back earlier. It had measured 27 and a half, so I cut it 28. As I did with the back, I'm gonna mark where the seam is on this piece. Then I'm gonna go over and do my allowances, the same as I did for the back. Okay, on both sides I have the, the fitted line, the allowance to let it spread a little bit, and then the seam. 
I've now got all my parts uh, fitted and cut. This is my front uh, skirting area, kind of, or the draped area, seat, then back, and the back that comes around. And these two will meet here, and then these will come off. So, probably going to start by sewing these two together, and then I'll probably um, sew the front part to the all the way to about here on each side and then I'll come and sew the back part all the way to about that point and just see kind of where they meet up and then hook them together and do that again on the other side.
Okay, I think we've managed to accomplish what we're trying to do here. We've got it seamed together, you know, out back and everything. I've still got a top stitch. Uh, these seams down around here. Now I'm gonna uh, top stitch that seam down on this one. Uh, I'll top stitch this one where the seam comes into on this side. And I'll, you know, I'll run that top stitch down around and all the way around like that. And then all I gotta do is, is just go around the bottom and turn it under and you know kind of hem in under and she got the sloppiness she wants in here um kind of sloppy a little bit everywhere ish but thank good thank goodness they wanted it so all right